Hello, everyone, and welcome to Q and Eric Hello, Live. Everyone. Sorry, we got a bit of a late start. Hello, everyone, and welcome. I don't know why I'm hearing myself. Now I'm not. And so let me know in the comments if everything is working. Again, I'm doing this all alone, so I'm limited in my ability to monitor it, but I'm here to answer your filmmaking questions. And we're looking right at the chat. And I did a, a bit of a simpler setup back here because I think it's going to help the encoder. I messed with some of the settings. I think it should it already looks better to me. So let me know if it looks better to you guys as far as quality and all that good stuff. I'm trying to get this going up. Can you see this? I don't know if this is working right here. No, no it's, it's not working. Let's get to the questions. Okay, so leave your questions in the side. Also, we figured out how to record the chat. So last week's Q and Eric, the bad quality because of my fault is on our this YouTube page. So you can check it out and leave a comment. And away with the show. Okay. Um, da, 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 da. Rogue Serial really wants me to say hi to him. Hey, I'm not going to be doing that all show. Uh, so we started the clock. We started 13 minutes late, so we're going to go to 6.13. Um, okay. Keenesta says, Eric, what is your actual day job? Um, and I just saw another funny one. So my actual day job is answering your questions. No. it's um, My actual day job is I work for YouTube now, before I work for Next New Networks. And I run Indie Mogul. We've got some cool, exciting new things planned for that, which I cannot tell you or I'd have to kill you. And uh, but we should be coming out soon. And then I am also in the capacity of basically helping other YouTubers. Um, basically, we have it. We're still, it's a new thing. We're still starting out. But I'm going to be uh, working for YouTube and helping other YouTube creators, maybe like you watching right now, uh, become successful on YouTube. So a pretty cool job, and then of course I make my own films on the side, Father Son Run, and a few others, which if I told you, I'd have to kill you. Uh, okay, so, okay, the beef, oh geez, we lost that one, hold on, I'm going back to it, the beef 1996, cool name, says, why did you just decide to stop hosting BFX? Was there another project in particular that you wanted to do instead? No, well, not really. I mean, basically, um, I've been doing backyard effects for three years, which in internet time is like 47 years. There's actually a calculation. Um, no, that's not true. But, you know, uh, as Zach would tell you if you grabbed a coffee with him, uh, the BFX schedule is a very grueling one, and after doing it for three years, I thought it was time to sort of pass on the torch. I was starting to repeat myself, things like that, and so that's why we did the contest. So pretty much, you know, why I, what I said when I when we did the whole changeover, you know, was true. I wanted to basically, you know, be able to get away from the day to day grind of producing the show, give someone else a chance, bring in some fresh blood. And at the same time, you know, look at uh, bigger sort of uh, executive producer type things for any mobile, as well as Next Networks, the, the company as a whole that I, that I work for. So um, that is why. And then as far as any particular project, there wasn't like one particular project. But basically, you know, as I've said before, I want to go, I want to make feature films and things like that. Uh, I shot a documentary two years ago, two summers ago. So... I mean, not one particular project, but to be able to have some more free time to work on, I guess, bigger movies because Backyard Effects is is great, but it's you know it's a lot of little projects one after the other. Um, okay. Oh, it's a good question. Led Zeppelin, nineteen forty two says, "How can I find real actors for my film?" A lot of question marks, not just friends. So. I think this is a great question. It's something that basically often divides, you know, the lower quality, the just starting out films from something that's a little more serious and and, and uh, definitely would take it to the next level as far as your your indie DIY films is having 
actual actors, people that want to be actors, not friends who are willing to act in your film. And, you know, we all start out with just doing it with friends. And if you're lucky, you know, one of your friends ends up wanting to become an actor or is just a natural actor. Uh, but a lot of us, myself included, uh, we're not that lucky. So uh, basically what you should do is, you know, if you're in a smaller town, if you're in a bigger city, there's tons of actors that are already there that are starving to make cool stuff. And if you have a platform, like say you have a YouTube channel or something, you're going to actually finish your project and put it out there on the internet for people to see. And even if only a, a few hundred people might see it on YouTube, that's still more than a lot. There's a lot of talented actors that, you know, still don't make things that hundreds of people see. And, you know, they, they work in, in small, like, theater productions or uh, if they just want to do film acting or television acting, you know, they'll do a lot of student films. And a lot of times we learned through getting, when we started using real actors for Backyard Effects and the Mogul, a lot of times these actors, they're really frustrated because they'll work on a, a student film that will never see the light of day. They'll put all this heart and soul and probably, you know, do a great performance. And not only will no one else see that film, but often they never even get to see it. These, you know, film school students just kind of, for whatever reason, just disappear. And, and it's just like they have no proof of it, not even for the reels. So if you are a DIY filmmaker that can turn something around and is actually going to make it, finish the project and put it up online for people to see, which obviously I would encourage all of you to do, uh, you can be like, you know, hey, we're going to do this. It's going to be fun. And in a week, it's going to be out there or a month or whatever. So that's number one, I think, is 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 actually finish it and, and have that benefit of it seeing the light of day, which is something that I think a lot of starting directors overlook and it's a huge asset if you're proactive. Two, um, you know, if you can afford to pay them, that always helps. But I think that is, that's sort of like the top tier. We only started paying back backer effects actors like towards the end. Um, obviously give them free food and stuff. Well, okay, so here's the other thing is basically uh, you have to look professional to them because when you're meeting an actor for the first time, you're not just assessing them as far as if they can perform, but if you are a, a director, indie DIY filmmaker, they're assessing you to see if you are someone that's making a project or you're worth their time as a director. So you're really, it's really interviewing each other. And so whenever I meet with actors, I'm always very conscious to, you know, convey that, that I know what I'm doing and this is actually going to happen and that, that, you know, selling it, this is why it's a, it's a good project for them. Uh, you know, assuming they're the, the actors that I want to get, you know, but you kind of go into it like that. So, so uh, I think one of my first Q and Eric's we did that you can watch on this channel is uh, directing tips 101. I talk a little bit more about things you can do to be more professional or, or at least appear more professional. So watch that video. Being organized and and having good communication is probably the number one thing. Um, and so you, you come to them like that. And then uh, another simple little thing is to basically like get a rehearsal space to uh, for auditioning them. And you can often find these for free. Maybe your school there's like a there's like a theater room or something that you can you can have access to for a couple hours. Or at least in bigger cities, there's like rehearsal space that you can rent for really cheap. Sometimes even community ones for free. If you do the extra work to like get a actual space. And it's just, it could be an empty classroom. It could be anything. Just something that's not like your living room or something uh, or your bedroom. That's like the first kind of, you know, uh, this is not maybe like the actor might get kind of scared. Uh, that will go a long way for the actor to be like, wow, this person's really got it together and I want to work on this project. Uh, where to find these people. So that's kind of how you treat them and, and how you can best, how to approach trying to get real actors instead of your friends. And then where you find them is, you know, if you're in a big city, Craigslist, uh, there is a resource that I can't remember that's free where we found our actors here in New York. Uh, but if you're in a small town, you know, go to um, like a theater company or, or you know, 
a drama club or things like that, um, I think that's a good place to, to find it. Um, but Craigslist, I mean, with digital stuff, it's, it's really easy. So I answer that question with really long time. Only 79 people are watching. This is a, a lower turnout. Um, probably because I just posted the BFX thing. Okay, I'm going to jump ahead. Um, Rodeo Kasha says, can you use a better camera next time? Uh, I could, but the problem, I will experiment with something else, but basically the quality of the stream is really limited by kind of the bandwidth. And this camera's probably not terrible. It's just, it's, the resolution is so downgraded um, to, uh, where is this light coming from? Is this one going on the camera? Huh? Uh, um, it's so downgraded to basically stream it. But we'll do some experimentations. Um, okay. Okay. Jeff Dunham 666 says, Eric, what is the best cheap camera for good audio and video quality? This is definitely the number one question. And, you know, there's no simple answer. Pause, I'm gonna turn this light off because I think it's giving me a glare. Is that better? Yeah, I think that's better. Um, okay. Oh, that's totally better. Sort of. Uh, okay. I mean, it really depends on what you're looking for. I mean, DSLRs are great for giving that filmic look, but the sound is you have to do these. We have to get a external field recorder or something like that. So, you know, I really like DSLRs, but it really doesn't matter. It's all about it, do you have a good story to tell? And you can tell a great story with any kind of camera possible. Every camera has sort of its different advantages and disadvantages. Uh, I'm thinking about doing some more like gear type review stuff on Q and Eric. Um, but really you could talk, I could talk for three hours about cameras and there's not a definitive like this is the best cheapest one. Um, probably the best DSLR for cheap is like the, the T3i. Um, but for a hundred bucks more, you can get the 60D, both great cameras. Um, okay. Let's see. I'm going to scan ahead. Blah, blah, blah. Um, Cliff Rec 86 says, I'm starting my own web show. Is it good to put it on YouTube or start my own website? Is it a, it's a zombie knockoff? I already have it written. Um, I think the answer to that is both. Uh, I mean, I think you definitely want to utilize YouTube uh, as far as your video player. I'm going to scoot up a little bit. I feel kind of far away. Um, because it's got easily the biggest audience online, hands down. Um, so as far as getting eyeballs on it, the most eyeballs are on YouTube. And now, you know, the quality, it's got full HD. Um, you can upload virtually any format video when it turns it into something that anyone can watch. Uh, all that good stuff. So, you know, to be, to be fair, you know, I work for YouTube now, but I would have said the same thing before um, because it's just the most people will see it on YouTube. Simple as that. And it's got a great player. You know, back in the day, I think Vimeo, uh, they had HD first and the quality was better, but now it's, it's everything, ha everyone's got HD, so it's, it's good. Um, and there's way more people on YouTube. But then, I think you could stop there. You could skin your page, the Q and Eric page looks pretty, and you could do all those cool things. And I think you could, if you just, if it's just for film, if you just want to have a cool place for people to watch your stuff, I think you could do everything on YouTube, uh, but there's advantages to having your own site, like if I had QNeric.com, because uh, you have full control and you can put extra things, you know, like forums and stuff like that, um, but I would still just embed the YouTube videos on my site. So that's the question for that. Um, hey, uh, Laporte. RM says, hey, what is your opinion on working with software like 
Motion, Blender, Cinema 3D, and why don't you do it? Uh, I think those programs are great. I've only used Motion out of those. Um, and the only reason that I don't use it is just I haven't had the time to learn, I mean, to learn how to use it. I think there's already people that are amazing with those softwares, and I just assume, you know, direct something and have a vision for something and then work with someone that was more talented than myself with that program, and then together we could make something that's the best, you know. Um, but I've often thought about it. It's like maybe I should just lock myself in a room and, and just do... The, you know, digital effects, but, you know, I think you know, the, as you get better, like, when you start out, you should know how to do everything you need to do, but then when you get further along, you want to specialize in what you enjoy the most and what you're most talented in, and hopefully those are the same thing. Uh, okay, jumping back ahead. What is the secret to becoming famous on YouTube, says Jewel Sack Band-Aid. Um, I mean... There's definitely some tricks, um, but I mean, for the most part, I think it's just you have to have a passion for what you're doing, and you have to have, you know, talent, passion, hard work, and and some luck. Uh, you know, it's a lot different than when when Backyard Effects got popular. It was a lot smaller, smaller universe, uh, but there's still new stars that come out every day, and you know, I, I think it's similar to what you know to be a star in anything. Um, but with YouTube, I think it's really about engaging with your audience directly and, and, and doing that. Um, the slime box says, what editing software do you use most? I pretty much only use Final Cut Pro now, although I learned on Adobe Premiere. Uh, RSA1027 says, how do you get funding for backyard effects bills and shorts? Uh, all those were, and back basically from the beginning, backyard effects has been funded by Next Networks, the parent company that owns it. And so that is where we get that. Um, okay. Mr. Crazy Kids One says, how do you become a YouTube partner? Good question. Um, there, I mean, basically I think, I don't know if it's published on the site, but you know, there is kind of a, you know, you have to have a certain, your channel has to have to have a certain number of subscribers and views and things like that. But basically, you just apply, and um, and I think if uh, if you, I think it's just youtubecom forward slash partners and if you qualify, you know, you can get in. Otherwise, um, and I think they'll tell you some of the reasons why you didn't get in. But I mean, all this information should be online. Um, ha. Huh. Okay, next question. Ooh, people are answering other people's questions in the comments. I like it. Uh, like Stripes 100 says, have you ever made a movie you didn't like so much you just trashed it? Um, there's definitely big sections of shorts I've totally thrown out. I don't know if we've ever thrown out a whole one. I mean, with Backyard Effects, we couldn't because we didn't have time often to reshoot it, we would just edit it into something. Um, there was one short film I made when I was first starting out, one of my original sites, that it just, I started shooting it and I could just tell it was just going to be terrible and I didn't have time. So I ended up just like rewriting it, like just shooting it like a quick earlier ending that was just like, this idea is stupid, right? Like me talking to other characters and they're like, yeah, you know, broke the fourth wall and said it sucked and then ended it and it was pretty bad. Um, uh, on O Ninja 95 says, hey Eric, what would happen if you and Freddie W collide into a movie together? <sighs> um, that would be awesome. And I'm hoping to actually meet him soon. I've never met him, but I'm a big fan. And I know he knows about Indie Mogul, so if you guys think we should do something together, you should send both of us a message. Go to Freddie W and be like, you should work with Eric. Um, but no, I think I'm actually going to be meeting him soon, and, you know, who knows? He does amazing stuff, so that would be great. Um, okay, this is a good question. Matt, Matt Amy's says, what's your advice on location scouting? 
Um, so location scouting, first of all, you should do it. The worst thing you want to do is have all your actors and crew or all your friends or whatever, or even yourself, and be out there trying to film and be like, ooh, let's shoot over there, because uh, it's just, it will kill your, time, your production schedule. Um, and then I would just, you know, you want to go, you should go during the time when you think you're going to shoot. If you're going to shoot on a weekend, go on a weekend at the time that you're going to be there. You don't have to be there the whole time. Uh, if you can kind of hang out for a little bit and check up on it during the you know beginning, middle, and end or whatever. But you want to see what the environment, assuming it's going to be outdoors, is going to be like as far as like pedestrians or are you going to laugh, someone going to yell at you, you know, go and hang out there and, and take some stills, bring your camera and, and get some, or maybe you and one friend and, and get some test shots because if someone, better to have some angry owner or, you know, park ranger or something come and yell at you and say, you can't film here when it's just you and one friend a week before the shoot than when you've got everyone there. In fact, watch, we just posted on Andy Mogul's YouTube um, an awesome behind the scenes from the new Captain America uh, short film from the Epic War Movie Month. And they had a problem with basically they got kicked off a location. So you just want to make sure that it's safe and locked down uh, and that you, you, you know, not only does it work good for your shots, but that you're not getting kicked off. That's the biggest one. Uh, two, um, sound. You want to be like, Oh, is there a river or a hospital right next to here that, like, there's always, in, you know, fire engines going by? I'm not going to be able to shoot here because the sound is terrible. Got to think about that. Um, and the other thing is just basically, like, then you just want to look at it for your shots. And the best thing you can do there is actually bring your camera. Sometimes I'll just bring my, you know, the phone on my cell phone, the camera on my cell phone, and just kind of get, yeah, this should work. And I'll take a bunch of stills. And, and then uh, if you have storyboards, you can compare it to that. Um, as much as you can plan out your shoot ahead of time, the better. Um, hey, Eric, uh, Dragonforce7100 says, Hey, Eric, I'm not familiar with Adobe After Effects CS4, so could you help I use it on a Mac? Yeah, sure, come on over. Um, you know, bring your uh, MacBook Pro, and we'll grab a Dr. Pepper, and I'll just kind of walk you through it. Uh, there's a million tutorials online and, and on YouTube and, you know, but the best advice for learning your software and what I always learned, um, what helped me is to not just go like, I'm going to teach myself Final Cut Pro today. It, you should go in with a very specific objective of, I need to final, so let's say After Effects, you know, I want to figure out how to make this uh, this basketball glow green and kind of get blurry and then have a light of sparks come out. You know, something very specific and you're going to go and you're going to start messing around with the different things and start with a, a tutorial online to give you like, you know, the basics. And then you're, the first four things you're going to try is going to fail before you figure out how to make it glow green and have sparks. But but then you're gonna, the first thing you're gonna do is like, oh, that kind of looks more like it's on fire. And, and that's not what I need for this, so I'm gonna keep moving on. But then next time, four projects down the road, you're gonna need to know how to make fire, and you stumbled on it accidentally in your first project. Same thing for Final Cut, you know, try and cut a specific short film with that software, and you'll, you'll stick with it more, and you'll learn faster if you're trying to do a specific project, not just like mess around. Uh, okay, let's jump back ahead. 123 viewers, pretty good. Um, the slime boxes, how did you start making movies? I started like you guys, you know, just sh shooting little videos with my friends. Um, I first started on a, a JVC uh, VHSC camera, which if you watch Back to the Future, the first one, or all of them, I guess, that like that big video camera with sort of sort of like black and red that um, that Doc and Marty uses to sh to document the first time travel thing. That was my actual. I had that same camera, or my stepdad did, and um, <coughs> I think I might still have it somewhere in storage. And that that's what I first 
you know, just stupid things, action figures and, and us being bad actors and all that stuff. Um, someone says I'm ignoring them. Dylan J. Robb, ask your question again, and I will ask answer it next. Um, let me actually go back. Okay, now answer it again, because it's lost in the may 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 mayhem. Uh, so that's how I started, and then there was a big gap where I didn't I didn't have time or whatever, you know I skateboarded and other dumb kid stuff, and then uh, in high school I started really getting into it again, and then pretty much all through high school and college I would just make a little short film here and there with my friends, and but not in the towards the end of college I bought my first. Uh, uh, mini DV camera and I got a computer that I can actually edit. I got Adobe Premiere and I started actually like making things uh, and that's, and I started entering the film fights. Filmfights.com is really what really kind of sealed it for me and, and turned maybe every once in a while a hobby into something legit. Okay, so where's that question that you say I'm ignoring you? Uh, I don't see it. Uh, I don't see that name. See? No, I'm listening. Nope. I don't see it again. Keep asking. I'm going to look for it. No. Oh, I saw a big face. All right. Different question. Uh, okay. Here we go. Back to the top. Bottom. Okay. John 56S says, how do you film two people talking from different angles with one camera and make it look like one take? This is pretty easy, actually. Um, and again, a lot of good resources online. If you did a search for, like, shooting a conversation, it would probably be the best way. But um, basically, you just have your two actors, have them face each other. And this will also be a quick kind of overview of the 180-degree rule. So let's say I'm talking to you, the camera, right now. So, well, no, so these are people right here. So here's your two people, and they're talking, and basically imagine a line in between the two people talking, and you can, you have to, you, the cameraman, has to stay on one side of that line. Other than that, you can just, you know, you can film anywhere you want. I like to shoot, especially for web stuff, closer because you got to think they're watching on a little screen. But so this is going to be really, you're not going to be able to see what this is. But, uh, and then you just, you know, you shoot, you have them rehearse or whatever. And I like basically just shoot all of actor one's, I shoot his side. And so actor one, we go, okay, we're going to start with you, set up, film on him. He actually talks to actor two and they talk, you film all their takes, you get a wide, you get a close, and then you switch sides, and the whole time actor two was still performing, but maybe they were just kind of warming up, or, or and, then, and then you switch over, and then you actually film actor two, and you do the conversation again. If you have two cameras, you can film at the same time, and you just have to make sure to not, you know, get the other camera person the shot, but if you follow the 180 degree rule, it's actually pretty easy. Um, oh, okay. Super Pointless Stuff says, happy birthday. And I'm sorry if I'm ignoring you. I'm not ignoring you. I'm just, I can't talk and read at the same time. And this goes so fast. There's so many comments. It just whizzes by. So you can keep asking the same question. If I don't get it, don't be shy. And hopefully I'll see it. There's, I'll never get all the questions. But that's why we're going to do them every week. Um... Oh, Ninja 95 says, hey, Eric, I need help on making a gun, and my mom won't allow me to, so how can I improvise? Don't ignore. Um, this is tough. I mean, if your mom doesn't want you to, I, I can't, you know, that's tough. But the cool thing, check out uh, Cardboard Warfare, I think it is, and it's these guys. They made these totally fake-looking cardboard guns, and they made the most amazing short. I think it's Ponage is the username, but it's amazing, and they use After Effects and, like, real, like, blowback and, and muzzle flare and stuff, but, I mean, the, the things, the props themselves look so fake, but it looks awesome. Uh, okay, 
Where is uh, the trailer of horses? Where is Justin now? He's in the other room. He's working. He's got stuff. He can't come every time. Okay. Um. Band Band Nana says, if you could remake any film you've ever seen with potentially a limited budget, what would you remake and why? Oh, I was just thinking about this. What movie would I love to remake? Um, oh, man. I'll have to get back to you on that. There was definitely one I was thinking of. Uh, okay. Uh, Black White Production says, how do you enter films into festivals? So there's a lot of websites that like will uh, collect uh, film festival entries. I, I'm forgetting off the top of my head which one they are, but basically, uh, I mean, if there's a big film festival like Sundance or South by Southwest or Cannes or Tribeca, you know, you just go to their sites and it's pretty easy. You're on right there. There's how to enter, and often you have to uh, pay a fee and burn a DVD, or sometimes even worse, you have to put it on a very specific format, like a like an HD cam or something, which is often expensive to, to whatever you shoot your film in, you have to convert it to this other format. Most of them, I think, are DVDs now, which is, you probably have a DVD burner on your computer. Uh, so it's just a matter of, I mean, they're all a little different. Um, and some of them are free, some of them cost money, and the prices are all different. So I would, I mean... You can enter the big guys if you have the money for it, but I would just look around, do some web search for your local area. Uh, most, you know, most areas have a couple different film festivals, and it's a great way to start, you know, with your local ones. Uh, Seven Thunderstruck Seven says, "How did you grow that amazing beard? Lots of practice and um, peanut butter jelly sandwiches." No. Um, uh, I'm not, no, the name thing, I'm not going to do it. Uh, super pointless stuff says, how do you clone one person in After Effects? Great question. You don't even need After Effects. You can do this in Final Cut. Do a search on the Indie Mogul webpage or the Indie Mogul YouTube page for cloning effect. Effect, Steve Nelson did an awesome um, Weekend Extra, I think, or Four Minute Film School on Cloning Effect, and there's a hilarious short film attached to it, Steve Nelson, the movie. Check it out. Uh, I think it's just called Cloning Effect. Um, okay. The Beef 1996. Oh, we got, let's get something else. We got to answer one of your questions. Uh, the Sleepy Hollow XX says, I'm about to leave. I need you to answer this question. I need a cheap camera that will perform good enough for CS5. What should I use? I mean, you could use any camera for CS5. Um, in fact, the better the camera often, the harder it is on the software. But, you know, it's tough to say what what cheap is for you. You know, you, if, if you guys give me, like, a budget of, like, I can't spend more than X amount of dollars... I could maybe give you guys a recommendation, but there's just there's so many cameras. It's really about what you prefer and things like that. Again, I like the DSLRs, but you know, a thousand dollars is really where you're starting with that, which I think is a great value for the type of camera you get. But that's way more than I could afford when I started. So, you know, it's more about telling a great story than just having a great camera. Okay, I'm still looking for. Okay, uh, wow, sorry, I can't keep ahead, I'm going to jump ahead again. Uh, who is your favorite director? I just saw that. I'm not ignoring you. If you guys would write the question again instead of you're ignoring me, they're just coming too fast, I can never read them all. Um, okay... 
Uh, Roll, Lover Roller Coaster says, really random, but do you know about the Royal Wedding here in the UK? Yes, I do. I probably won't watch it, but I know about it. Um, uh, how do you use U YouTube Live? You basically have to be invited. It's still sort of in testing phase. And I was lucky enough through Next New Networks um, to get an invitation, but... Uh, you know, once it becomes available to everyone, it's super easy and awesome. Uh, um, sorry, guys. I'm a little slow today. Uh, what's the best stop... What's the best STOUR stop motion animating software to use? Okay, uh, Chronostar524 is probably saying what's the best stop motion animation software you could use. Um... I did the stop motion episode on stop motion episode of BFX way back in the day, and I think I used Frame Thief, and there was a trial, and I really liked it, um, but um, a friend of mine is using a Dragon something, and they really like that on a stop, mo stop motion film, so... Um, I would check those out. I don't do it enough to know for sure. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, Kia Sia Prattle 10 says, any tips for shooting a good, uh, oh, my battery's low, uh, a good action scene? Um, yeah. Uh, and actually, Freddie W has some great tutorials on shooting those too if you go on the second channel I think it's one of his earlier videos he talks about like basics of action scenes but really it's all about um, using the let me see let me steal from him let me think what do you say um, no but I think you know it's all about pacing action scenes are all about pacing and there's a couple different rules of thought but you know you can have a lot of different cuts and shaky camera and intense music and um, and interestingly enough, I think that DSLR cameras, as much as I talk about how much I like them, are not good for action scenes because of the, the shutter jello. And, um, and really, usually action scenes don't have a very shallow depth of field anyways. So, um, like, Freddie W uses, uh, I think, like, Panasonic HVXs or something like that. They don't use DSLRs, maybe at all, but definitely not for their action stuff. Um, because they want it to look more actiony and and it doesn't have that wobble. Um. Okay. I tried to comment again. Eric versus Chuck Norris. That'd be good. Okay. Uh, out of proportion says on the great story note. Do you have any tips on conveying emotion or feeling? Feelings through your films. Um, yes. I mean, that really, I mean, I think that comes down to good acting and good writing. But, you know, I think a basic rule of thumb is your job as the director is to basically, you know, is to take your viewers on a journey from point A to point B. And... Something has to happen along the way that kind of changes your main characters and you want your audience to be able to identify with those characters. So the way to convey emotion in a film is to get your audiences to care about the people on screen. And so that's going to be a good, a good performance, but it's also going to be, you know, the type of the story you're going to put your character through, uh, through a thing that's sort of like they can relate to, but at the same time it's gonna it's gonna invoke them emotionally. So you know when you're writing it, I'm still learning a lot of this myself, but you know you just gotta think like, um, and if you tell your story to someone, they're like, whoa, then you know that you know that's a good that's a good reaction. Okay. Stupid muffin movie says, is it okay if I love you? There, I wrote it again. Sure, it's okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, uh, but there's some good... 
It's Chris Life says, hello, Eric. I want to know how to make a realistic gun, 9mm to be exact, and how to make a sort of 3D shooting and the camera following the bullet from beginning till it hits target. You there? You reading this? Hey, you. Yes, you. Come on back, please. Um, for the gun, you know, just get an airsoft gun. They definitely sell them in uh, 9mm. Any kind of gun you could probably buy in the airsoft. You can get them on eBay. Make sure and get your parents' permission. And... They look way more realistic and are cheaper than trying to build something from scratch. So as far as the 3D bullet thing, I think there's actually, uh, for After Effects, there is a, um, oh, what's that, um, Action Essentials kit. And if you watch almost any Your Effects, it is probably one of the most commonly used effects. It's like, and then it goes, and the bullet kind of follows towards the camera and then the camera turns and then the bullet hits someone and honestly it's pretty overused uh, but there's like a there's a plug-in for um, oh geez help me out people what's the what's the company that I'm to, it's the biggest After Effects one um, that I'm forgetting uh, it's leaving me right now uh, Kramer does all of them uh, yeah so uh it's it's a it's a totally thing that you can get and it makes it a lot easier and there's probably like detailed step by step tutorials. Um, Mr. Homemade Films one says, "What's your opinion on going to film school?" I think it could be great. Um, you know, there's definitely times when I wish I would have gone to film school, but um, I think for some people you don't need to, but if you can afford it, and I don't think it hurts. Um, you know, you definitely learn some skills, but if you're dedicated and uh, passionate enough, you can learn a lot of those skills on your own, just like by doing reading books and, and watching tutorials online and just doing, just learning by doing. Uh, but the big thing that film school does is it gives you a chance to work with more talented people and collaborators than you wouldn't normally. Uh, because it's a bunch of people that are really invested and you're going to work with a great shooter and a great sound guy and all these people that you may not just be able to find randomly in your town. And you're all going to school for the same thing, so you help each other out for free. Uh, so you get to work with bigger crews than you were and you would maybe on your own. And you make contacts that will help your career later on. That's probably one of the biggest things that people will say about film school. Um, and a lot of times, you know, when you get further along and if you become successful you end up definitely like going back to those same film school connections, bonds that you made. Uh, okay, we are, I got 16% battery life and we have, mm, 12 more minutes. So it's a race to battery or time. Nightflash123 says, have you ever met up with any really famous people? Uh, well, I did get to interview um, Edgar Wright, which was awesome. Um, I interviewed Moby when we went to Sundance several years ago. Who else have I met? Not a lot of famous people. Um, I met J.J. Abrams' mom, which was awesome, and Steven Spielberg's sister, uh, which I think was actually in uh, Indiana Jones episode when we went and, and did uh, reactions um, uh, from Crystal Skull. So those are all in Indiemobo. You can check them out. Uh, hey, Eric, sorry if you answered this already. I had to reboot my laptop. How long did it normally take you to come? Okay. The Beef 1996 said how long to come up. How long did it take you to come up with the BFX build, build it, film it, and edit it? Um, sometimes we would do that all in one week. Uh, or like four days, but you know, I, w I would say when we were really rock and rolling, we could conceive something, build it, and and shoot it and do everything in a, in a week. But that was that was pretty tough, just because it's a lot with the test film and everything. Um, the more complicated build, sometimes builds alone took two weeks, and you know, so it really varied on the complexity. But they were designed to take a week or less. Um, 
Uh, Linkfan770 says, have you ever made an animation on a program like Flash? No, I tried to do an animation unsuccessfully many years ago, and it just, I didn't have the patience for it. I was like, why would I want to move these characters every frame when I can just get an actor and they can, you know, do it, <laughs> you kind of get it for free, so to speak. Uh, the actors move on their own, uh, and... And it doesn't take, you know, a day to get 10 seconds of footage. So that was discouraged me from it. I don't have the patience for animation, but I think it's awesome. I love animation. Um, okay. Eric, you look like the filmmaker Duncan Jones. Look at his Wikipedia pic. Thanks, John 56S. Uh, uh, Ra, Ra, R, Y, 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 Y says, have you ever thought of working with Film Riot guys? Sure, I'll do that. They're really cool guys. I think they make some great stuff. Um, I think we're probably both so busy that we haven't had a chance, but I wouldn't be opposed to it. Uh, Transport Manor says, are you ever going to make a feature-length film? Yes, I am. I'm working on it right now. I'm not shooting right now, but it's in the works. Don't you worry. And when I do make it, you guys better go see it. Okay? Because I don't want to put something out there. <laughs> okay. Just kidding. Uh, Fly Pie Film says, what is your opinion on 3D films? I like them. I mean, uh, a lot of people say it's a fad. I, I think they're probably around to stay. And I think it's a way for theaters to provide something that you can't really get at home. I don't think the 3D TVs are there yet. And some films, I'm like, yeah, heck yeah, I want to pay extra to see this in 3D. But, um, you know, I think the technology's gotten to a place where it definitely adds a, no pun, inten no pun intended, you know, a new dimension to the experience. Um, I don't think it's as significant as, say, black and white to color, but I think it's something like that. I don't think it's like what... 3D TV was back in like the 50s or 60s where, you know, that was a fad because technology wasn't there and gave people headaches and things like that. Now I think it's perfected enough that, you know, it'll be it'll be around to stay. And I don't know, I don't think, I hope not all movies are in 3D. I don't think that's necessary. But, you know, I think big action movies will continue to be made in 3D. And yeah, I'm down with it. I, I dig it. It's, it's cool. Um, uh, okay, I think this was the person that said you're ignoring me first. Rogue Serial? No? I'm not sure. Please answer this. Will there ever be a viewer showcase show where you show the viewers our stuff? Yes, there will be. I mean, your effects is sort of that, but... You know, that's definitely something that I always wanted any mogul to have more of is, is uh, you know, help you, give you guys tutorials and things to help you make your, your films better, uh, give you some short films that we make, but also be like a, a center point that can bring out sort of the best DIY indie films that other people are making and kind of use our audience to, to help other up-and-coming filmmakers, and that's something that we're actually working on right now. It's part of some of the cool, new, exciting stuff for Indie Mogul we're working on, so stay tuned. Uh, why are you no longer hosting BFX? Super pointless stuff. We answered that one. Uh, Hills Studio says, why are, what are the best formats to edit in, uh, sorry, uh, formats to edit in if you are filming off of a DSLR, best formats. I'm gonna, I'm gonna think, I'm gonna think you mean what codec should like you set your editing software to. Um, I use Final Cut, and if you, um, this is actually, you know, it could be a problem because the DSLR footage is so compressed, it looks great, but you have to compress it a lot. So the computer has to do a lot of work to kind of manipulate this footage. So if it's a simple edit, I'll just bring the, I think it's AVI, off the camera right into Final Cut. And it's kind of sluggish, but it, but it works. And, you know, like in Final Cut, you drag the clip in and it says, 
you know, would you like to set this sequence to match this clip settings? And you should always do yes. Basically, the short answer is your the editing the codec and sequence settings for your project should be the same as whatever your footage is in. Uh, so it's not, you know, doing twice as much work as it needs to. But if you're shooting something on DSLR and you're really going to need to, like, work with this footage a lot or do add a bunch of digital effects, I usually convert the raw DSLR footage into a more friendly format for Final Cut, which I, I use, I turn it to ProRes. The flip side of this, which, you know, ProRes, Final Cut loves ProRes and it moves super smooth. Um, but the problem with that is the ProRes files are huge. And so, you know, you're going to have to use up a lot of hard drive space. And it takes a while to convert it. But, um, but you know, it's, it's worth it if you're going to save so much time in Final Cut or whatever because you're not going to be waiting for it to be, you know, rendering and all that stuff. Um, but, yeah, on that note, I think it's kind of funny how these DSLRs have kind of made it like... You know, I almost feel like it's shooting on film again because, you know, there's so many workarounds for shooting with these DSLRs. You have to sh uh, you have to have your sound separately with like a, a field recorder, and you have to you know you we're clapping again with with clapboards, and and you have to sync the audio after the fact, and you have to you know convert the footage to a different format to actually start editing it, which you know I sort of equate to. Uh, developing the film and you have to do all these steps before you can actually start working with it uh, you know I think it's kind of interesting that you know, you get this great image this filmic image but at the same time it, it's you know the workflow is kind of as slow as film but it's it's cheap that's the difference um, cash short film says you know the BFX movie trailer are you guys gonna make it eventually that'd be awesome and you know how to make homemade scar wax Ooh, homemade. Well, first of all, I would love to make that film. I don't know if we ever will, but that would be epic. Um, uh, we'll see. Um, homemade scar wax. I mean, scar wax is pretty cheap, especially if you buy it online. Uh, and if you do a whoa a BFX search for scars, we do a lot of different episodes and different ways you can make scars. Uh, okay, we're getting close. Eight percent battery. And so I'm going to answer only a couple more. Uh, last Dollar Film says, any advice for a first-time producer-director shooting his first feature? Check out my earlier episode of Q and Eric, uh, Directing 101. Um, Rimki01 says, Hot Fuzz or Shaun of the Dead? Oof. I love them both, but i got to go with Shaun of the Dead because it was kind of my first introduction to the genius, which is Edgar Wright, Simon Pegg, and Nick Frost. Um, how would you make the best Western style showdown by FXH Films? I mean, get your costumes right, which shouldn't be that hard. It's dirty old stuff. Um, don't shoot it with little kids. Get real adults. Have them not shave. Make them dirty. Uh, if you can shoot in like the desert and you know get some cool looking guns and horses, done. Um, but just watch a lot of old westerns and 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 get the vibe and get inspiration and, and you know that's what I do a lot is just watch stuff and be like how could I replicate this? Okay. Eric's beard is enough to hide the Expendables cast in it. Uh, hashtag Eric's facts. Thanks, Fade. To up oh, battery warning. If this just shuts off out of the blue, it's because my battery died. Um, Link fan seven seven zero says I have to video a wedding first time and really nervous. Any suggestions? I film my friend's wedding. It's hard work and it's just I filmed it on like four different format cameras. I, I still haven't edited it yet. Brian and Heather, if you're watching this, which you're definitely not. I'm sorry I haven't delivered your wedding <laughs> video yet. Um, so get some helpers and I'll shoot on the same camera. Um, okay. So last three questions. Uh, uh, wow. Whoa, there's so many questions on here. Whoa, I lost you guys. 
You still there? Okay. Here we go. Three questions. Okay. Uh, answer that one. Uh, Giants eight one eight nine says, "Whatever happened to Father Son Run? Whatever happened to Father Son?" Okay. Uh, we're still working on it. We actually have a really uh, the first trailer is going to be released soon. I just saw a cut last week. I talked about it, and we're looking to finish it uh, this summer. By the end of the summer, with uh, so we can get into uh, you know make all the festival deadlines for next year. So it's still being worked on. We just took a little break from it. That was two out of three. Um, Mark. Market one two three four five six. Do you like Doctor Who? Yes, I just became a big fan, and we actually made an awesome Doctor Who video on Indie Mogul. Check it out. That was for our rated awesome trailer. That was actually for the new Doctor Who season, and I'm not cut up, so no spoilers. Uh, I know I didn't re I didn't answer the movie remake episode. I forgot. I don't. I can't remember. Okay, last question. Here we go. Yes. Video Copilot, that was one I didn't, I didn't, I couldn't remember. Thank you. That didn't count. Okay, last question. Here we go. Uh, but don't worry, I'll be back next week, and this recorded version will be up soon. 6% battery. Here we go. Last question. Caparia92, sorry for ruining all your usernames. How do you make an, how do you make an actor fly away from an explosion while doing like a half flip in the air? Cheers from Finland. Good. Good last question. Uh, the half flip is tough, but getting an actor to fly away is a pretty easy effect. Um, you know, uh, you know, you do a Google search or YouTube search. There's a lot of tutorials. Basically, you you lock down on a tripod and you get your actor like jumping up, and then and then you get them out of the way and you get like a clean plate and you basically just you get them jump and then you cut and then you take a little snapshot. Uh, you know, with um, uh, uh, Photoshop or something of, of that frame, you isolate them, and then you just like motion blur them, like zoom away, and then add like dust or something. And and the flip, you could get them doing it on a green screen, um, but the flying away is easier. And then you just add the explosion. So I know, guys, that wasn't a great last one. But I'm feeling a bit sick. I'm sorry. But we'll be back next week. Don't worry. And I'm sorry if I didn't get your... Uh, what is this? From 60% to 8% in 15 minutes. What? I know. What is with this computer? 4%. Oh, my gosh. Um, it was already low. So, anyone, thank you for watching. I'm sorry if I didn't answer your question. But don't worry. You know, I think this is a lot of fun. We're going to try and do these almost every week. It's an hour every week. Get your questions... Uh, and if you didn't get them this one, you can get them next time. And we'll probably set up an email, maybe address soon, just for this. So thank you guys so much for watching. Keep making movies. And yeah, tell us what you think. We'll leave the chat open a little bit after we, we close this uh, about the show, any technical things, anything like that. And we will see you next week. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Wait, now, now here's the awkward part where I hit stop.